Tablighi Jamaat, A House Divided, Part 15 Political Double Standards So having looked at the international context, specifically in Bangladesh, via the work of Dr. Siddiqui, we come back to England. Uh, and we come back to our main thesis, which is Pierre's uh, 2011 doctoral thesis at the University of Exeter. On page 231, uh, there's an observation made by two researchers, Sophie Gilliatt Ray and I believe Yahya Burt. Gilliatt Ray also had another piece entitled uh, Describing the Inaccessibility of Women to uh, TJ uh, seminaries, TJ uh, institutions. So again, it's an exclusive isolationist movement, uh, just going by the title of Gilead Ray's work. Anyway, in this context, she says, in the early stages of its campaign, the TJ did not see the importance of reaching out directly to build local consensus about how much the project would be geared towards towards serving the whole community, relying instead on the stated outward facing and multifunctional nature of the project to carry out public opinion without providing further reassurance. This shows their political naivete and their uh, immaturity in this field. Uh, Pierre writes, this indicates that Tablighi leaders in London were not initially experienced in the planning process, nor in information campaigns surrounding their project. And although I won't bring the screenshot, they actually hired um, PR companies in order to further embellish their image. Uh, one specific name given, and I won't mention it in this series, was Karen Jones. She was one of the people that were representing uh, the TJ because they were so inept. Um, further, it states that uh, several, uh, well, two planning officers, senior planning officers, Sunil Sahadivan and another one called Stephen Minoletti, they were actually consulted and they gave their opinion. Here we have uh, Sahadivan. He was a senior planning officer at the LBN and the chief case officer on the Abbey Mills project and had one of the most informed perspectives on the way the movement's interactions with the council have developed since TJ acquired the site in 1996. And he says, what perplexed, this is Piri saying, what perplexed Sahadevan is the way TJ have not followed through with the same due legal process, instead opting to illegally erect temporary structures on the site contravening health and safety regulations. So um, there was an argument made and it was quite a nice, neat term describing uh, what the TJ in London were trying to do because the house clearly is divided between North and South. Um, and it, the, the phrase is actually the mask becoming the face. But in the case of the TJ here, they will tick boxes, they will acquire the site, but then they'll carry out illegal activities because they think the job is done. And that's ultimately why they fail, because they're isolationist, inward-looking cultists. And then the other planning officer was uh, Stephen Minoletti. And his quote I give here, it captures the crux of the whole debate over the transformation of the TJ. So I'll read it to you. Minoletti states, I think one of the central issues is that actually how mixed is that? If you are not a member of their mosque or related mosque, how open would that facility be? You know, for argument's sake, and it sounds a bit obvious, but you know what sort of books will be in the library? If it's purely Islamic reserved books or something, or all related to the Quran, you know, what else might go there? You know what's on offer in the cafeteria? You know these sorts of things. Also, a school is an obvious one where you're unlikely to board there unless you're related to the mosque. And there's also been discussion at one stage because the boroughs want mixed use, for examples, for example, like residential. If residential is provided on the site, who's going to control who lives in there? 
Now let's obviously this is his speech, so it's not it wasn't a written, it must have been recorded and then transcribed. But he makes some excellent points there. And um the points the points that he makes is from a non Muslim perspective. He's talking about what sort of books would be available in the library and things like uh, food available in cafeterias and uh, residential issues. But as we've seen in the first part of these, these two parts, the TJ themselves are antagonistic towards other Muslim groups. In the example given in the last episode, the JI. And uh, uh, for, for sure, they refuse any form of uh, other Islamic group operating within their mosques. It's verboten. It's totally forbidden. So this is the cult-like nature. So Minoletti, even though he's talking from a community cohesion perspective, uh, he's hitting the nail right on the head because that is what the TJ behave like even amongst other Muslims. They would not allow other books come into their library. They would not allow uh, other people to stay in their mosques. And their seminaries and their school, their board schools, would be almost exclusively um, uh, attractive to the TJ. That, that he, he's actually summing up quite nicely. To combat this, uh, a TJ spokesman, Abdul Rashid Bati, responded on video. Uh, he said about uh, the TJ integrating with other Muslims and how they'd be in the community. He said, absolutely unfounded. The whole thing behind TJ is to welcome all schools of thought which encompass Islam. So um, that's definitely not the case. And on the other aspect with the non-Muslims, we welcome every faith. Every faith is welcome. We provide facilities for people who do not have the same mother tongue as us, who be able to um, um, participate in the lectures. They'll be given translations. So everybody is welcome. And this really um, is a bridge between all communities. Again, uh, that's his verbal statement. It obviously wasn't written, but it's been transcribed here. This is palpably false. They do not encompass other Muslim groups, and that's been demonstrated. Um, and welcoming every faith, I, I don't know what form of welcome that would take in a practical sense. And then just to sum up why the TJ failed so miserably, um, a comment, and this comment, was made. It was made by a senior tablighi to a London planning officer. This officer mentioned the T that TJ own an island as part of the site, and this island was filthy, disgusting. You know, part of the site, um, full of pollution, rubbish, all sorts of waste. The the senior TJ said, um, "It's all right. Women and children can go on that." site and this is the senior officer i thought wow he thought wow that is exactly the mindset that senior tablighis in london have the and it says the horror received a few years ago when the tj tr trustees said it's all right women and, and children can go on that site i thought wow this is horrific that that's the um the way that they view women and children and if they view their own women and children like that how would they view other religions and other non-tj uh, people muslims and non-muslims this is the political double standards the political inconsistencies and ultimately the failure of this cult stay tuned for many more episodes